G'day everyone, Prep Aussie here. I hope you're all well in whatever part of the world you're watching this video. Today is Saturday, the 10th of the 2nd, 2018, and the time here is 0800, 0818am, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Well, folks, I hope you've all been well. What an interesting week we have, we have had. Um, you know, you know, unless you're not reading the news, etc., you know all about the stock market. But anyway, we'll, we will digress into that in a second. I've got a couple of announcements here, folks. First, this is my PayPal account, uh, my Patreon page. I now have 25 patrons who are helping me go towards the freedom of information request as regards to submittal to the Australian government for the Clinton Foundation fraud. Um, I'm actually getting a little bit of money coming in now, so thank you to everyone that's that's actually helping with that. Um, I, I try to send everybody an email saying thank you. Um, I'm catching up at the moment, so I'll, uh, you, if you haven't got one, you will get one from me. Thank you very much. This is my, if you don't want to do Patreon, this is my PayPal account, prepozzy at gmail.com. Um, if you just want to give me a cash donation to that account, that's fine. Um, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, and it probably works out easier sometimes for people. Um, you know, I'll leave that up to you guys, whichever way you want to do that. Okay, folks, um, this is a company called Oz Farmers, who are now, I'm doing a partnership arrangement with them for sponsorship. Um, we're just trying to organise the, the fine details at the moment. Um, they are the only company that in, well, one of the companies in Australia that does the Patriot food supplies from America. So these guys have actually got the contract to sell the Patriot food supplies in Australia. Um, look, I've actually checked up on their on the Patriot Food Supply website and to the prices that these guys are charging. Um, and it's very, very reasonable, folks. They must be making literally $1 <laughs> for the food supplies they're, they're, they're stocking um, and selling because there's not a great margin in this. Um, and I wanted to check that before I told people to buy it because, um, you know, I don't want people paying thousands of dollars for something. So it is very reasonably priced, folks. Um, I've ordered a three-month supply from uh, Rebecca down there at Oz Farmers. And I'll be testing it, food testing it, etc., over the next coming months to let you guys know how it all goes. Now, the arrangement we're going to do is uh, we're trying to figure out a, a, a Prep Aussie discount coupon. Uh, we, as I said, we're fine-tuning that now, but I wanted to give them a plug here now so everyone knows exactly who it is. Um, these guys are actually rolling the ball with this. Um, I, like I said, it's, it's good food. We know it is. It's from Patriot Food Supplies, and I've actually tried it before myself, and it's really nice. It is really nice. So if you can't be bothered, you know, going to the shops and stocking up with bloody uh, 100 100 litre boxes, etc., then this is your next best call. Folks, if you go down here to the right, you'll see three months food supply for four people. It's currently out of stock, but they are getting more in. Um, look, in all honesty, if you can't, if you can find fault with this, folks, there's something wrong with you. Um, as, as we've said before, it is, it is a backup. It's just the backup. You know, it sits in a, it sits in its thing there for years, um, lasts forever, stays fresh for up to twenty five years, folks. So you can't go wrong. And as I said, it's a backup. You can't be bothered going down to the stores, etc. Just order this stuff. Okay, plenty to talk. As I said, there's plenty of talk about this week. Um, unless you've been living under a rock somewhere, as I usually say, you wouldn't have a clue what's going on. But 
the stock market has now i'm going to be careful what i say here the stock market has not crashed folks that might sound a bit weird to say that but it's in what they call correction territory now it's in correction territory because of the fact that Trump has released these documents. Have you not noticed that every time he releases the documents, the stock market crashes? That's no coincidence, folks. These guys are playing a, a bitter war against each other, and there's only one way for it to end, unfortunately. It's a terrible thought, but they're galvanizing left and right at the moment uh in actual fact i don't think the right's being galvanized that much i think the, the right is actually pretty free, free thinking and uh pretty sensible it's actually the people on the left that are the worry you know the pelosi's and the uh, schumer and look i've got to be honest i've, I've just been watching sorry morning coffee i've just been watching chuck schumer of late and i think he knows where this is going and I, after Pelosi's eight-hour speech, uh, shite fest, and I just tapped into a few of the bitter rebukes that came her way from within her own party, there is now definitely two camps in the democrat party now this this is a real worry folks this is not oh yeah it's good because i'll break down and this isn't this is not good because if you have two camps in a broken in a in a a broken party so to speak then there's only one way for one part of that party to go which is even more extreme now pelosi showed as i said to you guys if you watch the uh state of the union address Pelosi showed their intent and how entrenched they are. And unless someone gets her out of government and gets some of those people out of government, which is not going to happen, unfortunately, then it's going to get extremely bitter. And the first thing that's going to happen is their party is going to fracture, led by Chuck Schumer and a couple of the people in on his side, you know, they're lefties, but they're not ultra, ultra left lefties, if you know what I mean. You only have to look at the people involved in this to understand that. Now, when this party fractures, which it's going to, it has to because you can't have such extreme views on one side. You've got buddy. You've got people like Maxine Walter, Waters, is it? This freakazoid show with the Pizzagate ring on her hand, running around telling people, in, uh, I'm going to say every day, impeach 45. Now, you know what amazes me about this? And I think this is the same for a lot of people in Australia here. Um, that, sorry, my shirt's all tucked up. Is that she's... Um, Whatever happened to the, the dream, you know, the big American dream, and which was the world's dream sort of thing, was anybody from any race, creed or colour, etc. in America could grow up and be the President of the United States, as long as you were born there. So where did this dream go wrong? I just don't get it. And where do you get off every day saying that you're going to kill the President, you know, it, my recollection of stuff like that was if that happened, you know, in the 70s, for example, well, you'd either be feeding fishes or you'd be stuck in a, in a dark, doomy jail cell at the end of Crapville Lane uh, for the rest of your life. But it's been interesting that Trump's just let this and the others, they, if, you, if you're really paying attention, they've just let it go from extreme to extreme to extreme to extreme so where does where does it all end though that's the thing well like i said you can actually see already there's two different camps in the democratic party 
and soon somebody, Maxine Waters or a um, Pelosi or someone similar, is actually going to say outright that it's time to get rid of Trump. That's when the party will fracture and that's when it's going to get serious, folks. And in some regards, Trump is leading them down that path. He's doing it, you know, whoever is handling Trump, sorry, is doing a bloody good job because they are literally making the Democratic Party, they're leading them, you know, if you ever let a bull in a bull show by the big ring in their nose and you pull them along, yeah, that's what they're doing to them and it's pretty pretty bloody obvious, really. It's, <laughs> they're so, and this is what QAnon keeps saying, these people are so stupid. Well, they are stupid because their greed and their, um, their own hubris is actually getting them deeper and deeper into the mire to the point where uh, they just will not be able to get out. And I wouldn't mind betting, folks, that um, Chucky Boy and a few others have, you know, uh, come and see us up here for a minute, will you, fellas? Because, uh, yeah, this this is where this is going, you know, and they've, had a, they've been sat down and had a conversation with. So... <laughs> It's fraught times in America, folks, unfortunately. And I, I actually thought that it was going to be the opposite way around, that Trump was going to come in and create military law and all this sort of stuff, or, you know, um, martial law. But that's actually not going to happen. And that's not going to happen until the people ask for it. And why are the people going to ask for it? Well, the people are going to ask for it because of the fact that these guys, the, the fractured left lefties of the Democrat Party, will go to arms. And people are going to go, whoa, hang on a minute. This is crazy. What are you guys doing? And that's not a small majority of people, folks. You're talking about a million or so people, two million. That's not a small majority of people. Well, you know... 330 million, I suppose it is a small majority, but that's a lot of people to try and round up and shoot or whatever you're going to do to them. So martial law is actually being slowly indoctrinated into the, the mindset of the Americans via the Democratic Party and the extremity of that party. I hope that makes sense because that's where this is going. I was, I was trying to figure out why Trump's not arresting him, why he's not doing this and that, and blah, blah, blah. You know, Andy McCabe, et cetera, should be in jail. No two ways about it. It's, you know, clear-cut case of um, criminality. You know, you don't have to be an Einstein or a Rhodes Scholar lawyer to figure that one out. So it's going to be interesting in the next couple of weeks to see where this goes because, <laughs> as I said, it's death by a thousand cuts. Trump's just cutting them every day. Or not just Trump, but whoever Trump Trump's handles are is actually doing an extremely good job. If you ever want to watch counterintelligence, really good counterintelligence, watch what's going on now. And I'm not an expert in it, but I've been following it like crazy. And it's just it's just awe-inspiring to watch, to watch how they're making people in a party go down a particular set mindset that they probably don't even want to, but they're being led into it, like I said, like bulls in a ring, in a show ring. So, let's look at the stocks, for example, today. Hang on a sec. Sorry, folks, that obviously was not the stocks. That was the Oz Farmers page. Give him another plug. Okay, this is CNN Money. And the reason I like this page is because it actually lays out the world for you and it gives you an idea of where everything's at. It doesn't give you... Uh, it gives If you go into the actual finer detail down here, it gives you the changes, etc., um, which it does on there. Sometimes they put it on there, sometimes they don't. Now, as I said to you, 
the interesting thing here is that the stock market is not crashing, folks. It's a correction. And the reason it's called a correction is because of things like the S&P 500 going up 1.49% yesterday. So that's what it means. It's a correction. So to bottom out, people will buy stocks at that lower level and it'll take it up again. And then I wouldn't mind betting that Monday, Tuesday, it crashes. No, I shouldn't say crash. It goes down again, you know, another couple of percent. Um, and if you follow economics or uh, financial very well, then you'll realize that this is that is normally the case uh, in a free falling market economy. Um, if you look at 1929, 1989, all the nines, um, it, it goes up and down for a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so, and then you get the big one. Boom, just drops like a rock. Um, you know, Black Black Friday, I think it was Black Thursday, Black Wednesday, sorry. It dropped 25% here in Australia in one day. 25%, folks, not four, like it has done here. 25. Let that thought sink in. So wherever you are on that day, if it drops 25%, if you're listening to it and it's dropping 25%, or you're listening to it going down, 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 you know, it's gone past 10. If it goes past 10 in one day, then you are in a crash. That's when you excuse yourself from wherever you are, work or play, and you drive straight to a petrol station and you fill up your car, folks. Now, as I said, I um, filled up my cars and I've done my jerry cans etc and I keep keep ensuring that my cars are filled up and one thing that I've I I've have done the last couple of days is gone and fixed my mortgage rate as I said at 3.9 percent for the next three years that just gives me a peace of mind and that's not financial advice folks that's just for me like I said I made up my mind to do it it's up to you guys to decide what you're going to do. Uh, the CBA at the moment is doing 1.9%. Uh, sorry, 3.9%. I wish they were doing 1.9%. Jeez, everyone would be with them, wouldn't they? Um, and that's, that is, let me point something out to you. That is a historic low mortgage rate. There's never been a lower mortgage rate in Australia. Fixed. That's as low as it's going to go. And look, as I said, if it goes lower... I've won. If it goes higher, I've won. Because I'm pretty happy with 3.9%. And if you're in Australia then you, or New Zealand, then you understand what I'm talking about. Because during the uh, the recession we had to have, uh, mortgage rates were at 17.5%, some 20%. So I'm pretty happy with 39 for the next three years. Okay. Trading economics. I've pointed this out to you guys before. But what I want to show you in this particular item. Oops, sorry, I did the wrong thing there, folks. Sorry. This, this is an extremely good website, folks, and it's my go-to website for all my financial information. Now, this is the Dow Jones <coughs> Industrial Average. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Notice the sawtooth type of arrangement. See, the thing is, how this works is it's going to go up or it's going to go down then up, then down, then up, but it won't reach the next high, then it'll go down, and you see what I mean? It'll keep going down in a pattern where it just goes down, but then all of a sudden it'll get to a stage where it just drops off the side of the page. That's just history repeating itself. Now, the other day I said to you guys, just keep an eye on the... Um, 
the emerging markets. This is the United States here, Europe, and if you scroll down, it gives you a whole list of others. And if you keep going, Asia. Now, I just want to point out to you, this yearly here, this is, this is very interesting, folks, because I'm going to show you something in a second that's going to make you say, oh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. This is Asia. Now, look how much the, the Shanghai market's dropped in a, in a month, eight, or, you know, in a couple of weeks. Eight, well, zero, eight, five, three. Now, what's surprising is that over, the, over this year, it's only return, it hasn't even returned. So this, I'm, I'm banking this as yearly, as in February and January. It hasn't even returned a positive outlook for its investors. I'm going to I'm going to expand on that. I want to show you something. So when you go up here, if you click on the yearly, what it does is it gives you the highest to the lowest percentages. Now I'm going to show you something. The DAX has made a little bit of money, but look at the FTSE just above it. It's made negative this year. But then when you go down the page, obviously it keeps going down and down and down. Oh, sorry, I was on the wrong thing there. Sorry, this is the actual one. I want the green ones. Now, when you start going down this page, then you start realizing just how bad things are in emerging economies because it just goes down and down and down. Look at this, minus 16. But it also works in two ways, folks, where you can actually follow. This was interesting, I thought. Look at Zimbabwe at the bottom. So far this month, or you know, January, February, it's returned 116% on your investment. So you'd be pretty happy with that, wouldn't you? I don't even know why that's not at the top, to be honest with you. Oh, it actually looks like it's going the opposite way. Who knows? But I just thought I'd point that out to you. There we go, I think that's better. 6, 12, 18, 22. Yeah, that's right. But as you can see, the emerging economies are either ridiculously high or ridiculously low. There's no way they can keep up with the current forecasts, which means that it's in volatility style markets. Now, one second. Now, folks, this is not today's headlines from Zero Hedge. I've actually I uh, kept it for the last couple of days on this because I just wanted to scroll down so that you guys could actually see what the headings are and just how bad things are getting at the moment. You've obviously got the FBI informant testifies for the Moscow routed millions. Um, that, that story, folks, is literally going to blow up the world, literally. Inflation alert. Now, this is one of several articles in here about inflation. Now, there is no other way for this to go, folks. It's the inflation is going to skyrocket. There's no other way for it to go. Hence the reason the reason why I fix my mortgage rate. So if inflation goes up. So does interest rates, folks. But here's the kicker. As I said to you the other day, I'll show you. Let's go to the bonds. This is US bonds. The problem is people can't make money so the only way for the bonds to go is up. Now check this out. This is a 30-year bond. 
in a couple of days, this has gone from 2.96, where it was stuck for nearly a year on that one rating, and it's now going up to 3.2. So that's a worry. Now the problem is, is that the actual, to keep everything in check, the Federal Reserve and other banks around the world have to keep in line as the bond market goes up, so do interest rates. So you could literally see the bond rate starting to skyrocket and interest rates following closely behind. This is not um, world beating headlines, folks, or the first that anybody's heard of this. <clears throat> Excuse me. It happens every time that there is a market correction. Now, the reason this is actually interesting is because people like this, the current crisis is playing out exactly the same as August 2015 crisis, if you remember, because a lot of people seem to forget there was a few crises in between 20, 2007 and current. If I remember, I think there was three and they were quite big. The other fear index just flashed panic. Rate revulsion, bid to cover tumbles in ugly tailing 30 year auction. Dow dumps 600 points as VIX crashes again. You know, and this is what the Fed's gonna say. It's, it's a correction folks, it's not a crash, it's a correction. Dow drops 500 points. S&P breaks below key support as rate volume spike. This won't end well. Mortgage rates spike to four-year highs. Didn't I just say? Didn't I just say about the mortgage rates? Dow crashes over 400 points. VIX tops 30 as risk priority plunges. So, look. I guess what I'm saying here is that it's best to be prepared for what's coming. <clears throat> don't be another sheeple and, you know, don't think what I'm saying to you is I'm giving you the information based on an economic hack wise of myself who takes a pretty big interest in this stuff. So I'm just asking you guys to make sure you keep up to date with what's going on because you could wake up one day and interest rates have gone up 10%. Literally. If you follow what happened in 1929 and in the Weimar Republic and in Argentina, that shit is real. This is BP Earthwatch's page. And once again, this great man has done an enormous job here with this report. He spends 15 minutes going through it. And I haven't heard anybody else go through this, this report like he does. He pays particular attention to the actual items in it as regards to law and how that affects a person if they get caught up in this. And I, Jesse's done a really, really good job on this. If you want to watch this report, watch him, watch this, please do so because I'll put it in the description box as I will with everything else. Um, as I said, he does a really, really good job on letting us know exactly what's going on. And this report that he's mentioning here, um, I, as I said, I haven't seen anybody else break it apart like he did. It's really interesting, really interesting. Folks, before I do the scripture and the uh, Lord's Prayer today, I've got an interview tomorrow that I'm going to be doing with a couple of Aussie guys. And it's mainly for the Australian audience, of course, but um, there will be a lot. It's in regards to, okay, you wake up tomorrow, and it's financial Armageddon, 
where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Or worse, there's a major catastrophe. Um, you know, the sun doesn't come out a day. Look, anything. Um, I'm going to be interviewing two fellas, um, which is going to be a, a second video on the first video we did about, you know, preparing and how to get ready for those things, for the, these type of events. Are you planned? Where are you going? What are you doing? How are you going to get there? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a, a brain um, kicker, really, to get you guys or to help with people who they may be stuck, they may be this, they may be that. You know, look, it, this is what this is about, uh, building communities and helping each other. And look, I don't give a shit if you're a Muslim or a Buddhist or a bloody whatever you are. Um, as far as I remember, we all bleed red blood. And, um, you know, we're all humans at the end of the day. And we should be helping our fellow human beings out, regardless of who you are. If you want to come to me and you want to shake my hand, you won't get snobbery or anything from me in that regard. If you want to help, especially. But think about this as well, folks. People want to create division within societies for their own reasons, whether it be political, personal, greed. So try and, I would hope, I get a lot of comments on here on this channel on my site, you know, especially regarding Jews. Look, I don't get it, guys. Don't do it. Don't send it to me. Matter of fact, if you if keep people keep doing that, then I'll just ban you from the site. You know, it's very obvious that you know division, personal divisions, based on religion, is just crap. You know, that's why a lot of this there's a lot of these problems in the world. Yeah, look, I know I said about Jerusalem and blah blah blah. You know, look, that's just a Judeo Christian view, I guess, but it also seems pragmatic in my mind that. That's the way it should be. And I think if it is that way, then I think a lot of things will calm down over the years. It's the actual, I agree with Trump in some regard, that it's the actual fracturing of that that is constantly causing the problems. So why have a problem? Jerusalem's Israel, bang, that's it. There is no discussion after that point, is there really? Unless you want to go to arms, I guess, which they probably will, but look, you know, going down the wrong path there. My point is, is that unless you're planning, unless you're some kind of superhuman Superman and you are planning on doing this on your own, well, like I said to you, I will personally send you a white T-shirt with a, a um, target sign on it so you can wear it around proudly while someone aims and shoots you. It's dumb. There is no other way to do this except through community. Um, and I don't know if any of you have read, ever read any of the 1929 stock market crash personal antidotes or quotes, etc., from people who lived through it. How did they get through it? They didn't get through it on their own. They all had to pull together. They all had to feed each other and they all had to get through it. And remember, over 3 million people died in America from starvation in the 1929 stock market crash. Three million folks. And don't forget, I think it's 70 to 80% of the population lived on farming then. Let that sink in. So as I said, the interview on Sunday, tomorrow, uh, will be roughly the same time as today, will be in regards to how are you going to get ready? Or are you ready? And why are you getting ready? Okay. And as I said, it's it. you can't do this unless you do it with a community, folks. It's impossible. Honestly, you might think you can, but it's it's not going to be possible. Like I'm a pretty good fighter over the years, I've proven that. But 
I'm 53 now. Do I want to be standing on the side of the road looking at four blokes? No. You know, 25 years ago, yeah, would have cleaned them up easy. But now, 53, come on, give me a break. That ain't going to happen. Might take a couple out, but they're going to take me out. And then they're going to take my family out. So that's my point here. And this is going to happen, folks. As sad as it is, the reality is, is that this is going to happen. I hope that sinks in. Okay, let's do the scriptures. <clears throat> Bible Gateway, verse of the day, or scripture of the day, if you want. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that you faitheth groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all towards each other aboundeth. How freaky is that? Well, let me, let me do that again. Verse of the day. I only just said that, didn't I? I hadn't even read this before I brought it up, actually. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that you faitheth groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all towards each other aboundeth, i.e. community. That's freaky. Wow. Okay, folks, the Lord's Prayer. Very powerful prayer. And as I said, it's probably the only prayer worth saying, apart from your own personal prayers to God during the day. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless all folks. Prep out.